In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at forces in space, wherein we are going to learn the method to express a force as a vector in three dimensions, and then we will learn about important terminologies related to forces in three dimensions. Previously, we've learned about coplanar force systems, that is, resultant and moments are applied in a two-dimensional system, that is, along x-axis and y-axis only. But in most of the real-life problems and engineering applications, three-dimensional forces systems are involved. That is, all structures, machines and members are subjected to forces along x-axis, y-axis and z-axis. Such systems are called as non-coplanar force systems or space forces. The analysis of forces in space, three-dimensional, is done by using the vector method. In such a system, the forces have to be expressed in terms of unit vectors along three mutually perpendicular x, y and z directions. This helps us to get scalar equations or perform vector operations like scalar product, vector product. Let us now learn the method to represent a force as a vector in three dimensions. The method to express a force in terms of unit vectors i hat j hat and k hat along x, y and z directions can be sorted into four types depending upon the available data. Let us now take a look at these four types. The first type is when the force given is parallel to any one of the axes. When a force is parallel to one of the coordinate axes, it can be directly written in terms of unit vector along that direction. For example, the three forces shown alongside can be expressed as in the second type, angle made by force with one of the axes is given and the angle made by its projection in a plane with one of the axes in that plane is given. We will first resolve the force into two mutually perpendicular components. The first component will be along the axis with which the angle of force is given, that is, Fy equals F cos theta. Another perpendicular component is the projection of force in the plane of the other two axes, that is, the projection in the xz plane, which is equal to f sin theta. Next, we will resolve the projection along the two axes in the plane of the projection. For the force shown in the figure alongside, fy equals f cos theta, and projection in xz plane is f sin theta. We will now resolve the projection in the x and z directions. Hence, we find fx is equal to f sine theta sine phi and fz is equal to f sine theta cos phi. In the third type, two points on the line of action of the force are known. Consider a force of magnitude f is directed from point P, x1, y1, z1, 2, q, x2, y2, z2. The unit vector from P to Q is EPQ hat and can be represented as follows. Hence, the force can be represented as F bar is equal to F into EPQ hat, that is, magnitude of the force into the unit vector along its line of action. Hence, the force can be represented as, in the fourth and final type, direction cosines of the force are given. If theta x, theta y and theta z are the inclinations of the force, with the x, y and z directions respectively, then cos theta x, cos theta y and cos theta z are called as the direction cosines of the force. The components of the force can be expressed as fx is equal to f cos theta x, fy equals f cos theta y and fz equals f cos theta z. The relation for these direction cosines is cos square theta x plus cos square theta y plus cos square theta z equals 1. The angles theta x, theta y and theta z lie between 0 and 180 degrees. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Next, we will take a look at some important terminologies used to study force systems in space. Let us first learn about projection of force on a line other than the coordinate axis. The projection of force F on a line AB 
is FAB is equal to F bar into EAB hat where EAB hat is the unit vector along AB. To find component of F bar along AB, express F bar and EAB hat in terms of I hat, J hat and K hat. If F bar is equal to FXI hat plus FYJ hat plus FZK hat and EAB hat equals I hat plus MJ hat plus NK hat, then the projection of force F on line AB, that is FAB, is equal to FX into plus FY into M plus FZ into N. Next, we learn the method to find the moment of a force about a point. In a three-dimensional system, the moment of force is a vector given by R bar cross F bar, where R bar is a vector from the point about which moment is calculated to any point on the line of action of the force. Consider a force of magnitude F acting from point A and B as shown. The moment of this force about any point C will be MC bar equals RCA bar into F bar. Now we can directly express RCA bar in terms of unit vectors along X, Y and Z axis. Let F bar be equal to Fx into I hat plus Fy into J hat plus Fz into K hat. Then we can directly find the moment of force about the point C using the following determinant which relates the unit vectors to the magnitudes of the two vectors RCA bar and F bar. We can find the magnitude of moment of force about a line by first finding moment of the force about any point on the line and then finding the projection of that moment on that line. Consider a force F bar as shown in the figure alongside. To find its moment about a line AB, we will first find its moment about a point C on the line AB. Hence, MC bar is equal to RCD bar into F bar. The projection of MC bar on the line AB is equal to the magnitude of moment about the line AB, that is, MAB equals EAB hat into MC bar. On simplifying further, we get if the three vectors EAB bar, R, C, D bar and F bar are represented in terms of unit vectors I hat, J hat and K hat along the three axes respectively, then MAB can be represented by the determinant which relates the coordinates of the three vectors along the X, Y and Z axis respectively. Thus, the moment vector can be represented as the product of the magnitude of the moment and the unit vector along AB, that is, EAB hat. Let us have a quick review of what we have studied in this lecture. Three dimensional force system, that is, when forces act along all the three axes, X axis, Y axis, and Z axis, are called as non coplanar force systems on forces in space. Next, we learn the method to represent a force as a vector in three dimensions. There are four methods to represent a force as a vector depending upon the available data. The first method is when a force is parallel to X, Y or the Z axis. Such a force can be directly written in terms of the unit vector along that particular direction. In the second method, angle made by force with one of the axes is given and the angle made by its projection in a plane with one of the axes in that plane is given. We will first resolve the force into two mutually perpendicular components. The first component along the x-axis with which the angle of force is given. Another perpendicular component which is the projection of force in the plane of the other two axes. In the third method, two points on the line of action of the force are known. Hence, we will first find the unit vector from one point to the other point. Then, we will directly multiply the magnitude of the force with this unit vector. In the fourth type, direction cosines of the force are given. Hence, we can directly use the direction cosines to find the components of the force along the three axes. Next, we learned about some important terminologies used to study force systems in space. We first learned the method to find the projection of a force on a line 
other than the coordinate axis. The projection is given by the formula FAB equals F bar into EAB hat, where EAB hat is the unit vector along AB. Next, we learn the method to find the moment of a force about a point. This moment is expressed in terms of a vector and is the cross product of the vectors R bar and F bar, where R bar is the unit vector connecting the point about which moment has to be calculated to any point on the line action of the force. Then, we learn the method to find the moment of a force about a line. This is calculated by first finding the magnitude of the moment and then multiplying it with the unit vector along the line.